Hey, what's up? I'm Newt, and welcome to New Trishes. I'm really excited because it is not easy to find a vegan entree to replace the turkey and hold the center of the table. I think I just made it. Vegan stuffed squash with sourdough, lentils, and mushrooms for the protein and that meaty taste. There is no meat substitutes in this. It is not necessary. This nutritious, delicious squash holds its own. Let's dive in. I can't wait for you guys to try this. Vegan stuffed sourdough squash with lentils and mushrooms. <laughs> Nutritious. I am so excited. I am pumped. I feel like a little kid. When I was inventing this recipe, I was like, I want to make a hearty, yummy, traditional stuffing, but I don't want to use a meat replacement like seitan or tofu. Get that out of here. And I found that if you really cook down mushrooms, you can get all the liquid out of them. They have a similar consistency to meat when you bite into them. I'm also using caviar black lentils to add that protein. Yum! I'm using sourdough bread, but white and whole wheat will work. I haven't tried gluten-free bread, but it could be really fun. Let me know if it works if you try it out. I'm also using an onion and garlic, but if you want to make this recipe Ayurvedic, get those out of there and just replace it with a bulb of fennel and a teeny tiny pinch of asafoetida. Let's do it. Here are the ingredients. Instead of meat, I'm using black caviar lentils for all that goodness. I got a cup each of walnuts and pecans. I got a leek, three celery stalks. I have two tablespoons of arrowroot to hold it all together. I got four cups of mushrooms, a loaf of sourdough, a big, beautiful kombucha squash, a quarter cup of fresh sage and dry cranberries, two cloves of garlic, an onion, parsley, and thyme. Let's do it. Let's start with our bread. I'm using this stunning sourdough loaf, but feel free to try any other bread. Rip up the insides, spread them out on a baking tray with a little bit of room in between. Pop that in an oven at 300 for 20 minutes, making sure they're dry and crispy, maybe stirring them a couple times. Or you can leave them out overnight. That way works too, but I live in Manhattan and I'm scared of critters, so... No, thank you very much. <laughs> Let's do it. Mushrooms are delicate little guys. You know, they grow so close to the ground and they have so many nooks and crannies that they get pretty dirty. The best way to clean them is to soak them in water. Don't just do like a little zhuzh, zhuzh with the tap. That's not going to clean them. And then wipe them off with a clean towel like that. Snap off the end. Save this for our stock. We're really making a three in one video today. We got the stock, we have the stuffing, and we have the stuffed squash. Each recipe works on their own. If you have your own um, stock that you wanna use for this recipe, that's great. Uh, but I still recommend saving all these. You can put it in the freezer and make the stock another time. Mm, it's so yummy. Things get hella dirty too. They get dirt stuck between their leaves here. So you can see already by just pulling that back. The key to leeks is cutting them up and then soaking them in water to get all the dirt that's in between these many, many, many layers. Rub-a-dub-a-dub in the tub-a-tub-tub. -tub -tub. Okay, a little secret with stuff like leeks. So to cut it up fine so it doesn't roll around, I'm just gonna take this little inner bit out Save it for the stock so it sits flat and I can really get a strong grip on it. Putting my thumb on the back of the leaf, bending up my fingers, pushing it through to create a fine, beautiful, thin leek ribbon. And then the end, like whatever, into the stock. Cel bleh. <laughs> Celery is the best vegetable to practice your knife skills because it is solid, it's super cheap, save for the stock, both ends, and it is very easy to cut. I'm going to cut this into quarters. Don't try to chop up something like this. You don't have enough control over it. Chop it in half. This is a lot easier to control because you keep your thumb on the end of it, curl up your fingers using the heel of your knife, getting over top of it to see what you're doing and chopping down, creating that 
beautiful thin celery. Mm, yum. Peace. The sourdough looks great. It's all golden brown and crispy. Listen, that's exactly what you want. Ah, so good. Sourdough. <laughs> Settle down, girl. Simmer down. Simmer down. Put this aside. Sage, it's so cute and fuzzy. Save the little adorable leaves for decoration on the top. It's funny because I wasn't allowed to bring a knife in the restaurant I worked at that had touched animal meat. Um, so I ordered this knife and in the meantime I was using this knife that was at the restaurant and it was so blunt and the chef was so annoyed because it would just kind of bruise all the herbs that I was cutting and I was like no I ordered this knife and the knife finally came in the mail. I was so excited. I was like look at this knife. It's so beautiful and he's like are you kidding me? I told you not to bring a knife in here that's touched animal meat and you buy a knife that's made of dead animal." <laughs> my abalone knife. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> so I had to use this knife that was like beyond blunt. And the problem if you use a blunt knife with herbs, leaves that are so delicate, what happens is you just mush them and bruise them and then they kind of change color. So you want a really sharp knife. You want to get a really loose roll on top of it. Get over it and cut it into little chiffonade, chiffon, whatever the French word is, little ribbons, thin slices. Put this in the stock. Chiffonade, that's it. <laughs> little ribbons. So cute. Set that aside. Chopping down, keeping the onion intact, and then cutting it into cubes. Grabbing the time and pulling it off. Chopping up this kombucha squash. I picked the biggest squash I could find and girthiest so I could stuff it with all the goodness. You want a very sharp knife. Do not attempt to cut this without a sharp knife. A secret to sharpening your knife is pinching the blade at the heel. That way you know you're getting a 45 degree angle when you put your finger between the honing tool and the blade running from heel to tip just like a nail file. Get it nice and sharp. Okay, I want this to sit even, so I'm gonna cut off any little bit at the bottom. Perfect. Okay. Ah. Now, try to get as smooth as possible. We want to keep it round so it's going to be roly-poly and kind of scary to cut. So I like to keep my weight on it. Stab it. And then pull down. Keeping the blade away from your body, away from your fingers. There we go. We did it. We did it. All these guts are going to be so good in the stock. Scoop it out and save all of that for our yummy, yummy, yummy stock. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Look at our yummy squash. Just pop it on a baking tray, put it in a preheated oven at 350. It's going to be about an hour, but check it every 20 minutes and flip it. Each squash is going to take a different amount of time because of the size and texture. So you really just got to keep an eye on your squash and feel it out. You want it to be squishy and kind of bright orange. Way to do this. Cut. That is not the best way to do it. Ow. Fuzz. <laughs> Cooking the lentils are so easy. I used to be scared of lentils. I used to be like worried about the ratio between water to lentils. But once lentils are done cooking, you just strain the rest of the water. So I'm using three-fourths cup of lentils. Make sure you soak them. I soak these for at least 20 minutes. And then one and a half cups of water. Bring it to a boil. Reduce to simmer without a lid on it. And let it cook for 20 minutes. That's it. Check to make sure it's squishy when it's done. And just strain out the rest of the water. Couldn't be more simple. I'm going to add a little salt. Lentils. 
nutritious way. Store-bought stock doesn't even compare to homemade stock. So we're gonna use all the trimmings from everything we prepped today and make our own stock. So bring a pot of water to boil and put all this goodness in here, the mushrooms, the guts, the leeks, the onions, any scraps that you have sitting around the kitchen. Bring this to a boil, reduce to simmer for 45 minutes or longer. No waste. Store-bought stocks are chocked full of sodium and sugars and sketchy things like MSG, and they just do not taste as good as the real thing. So here's our little pot of gold. Pulse the mushrooms. All right, we don't want them totally pulverized. We just want a nice, rough chop to them. Perfect. Please decide, don't worry about washing out the bowl, and then pulse the toasted nuts. All right, let's cook. Okay, in a big pot, pour about three tablespoons of olive oil. Let that heat up a second. We're gonna start off with our mushrooms. Think of mushrooms as a wet sponge. And you wanna cook out all of the moisture in the mushroom so it can take on a new flavor. But the problem is that takes kind of a long time and a bit of patience. When you start cooking the mushrooms, you'll see that all this liquid is coming out of them. And in school, they taught us to be patient and let that cook off for like 20 minutes. But I just strain them halfway through cooking. I don't know why no one else does that, but it works for me, so I recommend it. Look how wet that is. I just put it in the strainer, push it through. Look at all that water coming out of it. There we go. So now they're starting to sizzle instead of steam. You hear that? That is exactly what we want. That way I know that the liquid is all out of them and they're ready to be soaked up with goodness. We're gonna add half an onion. Let that cook down a little bit. Add a little bit of our sage. Adding our garlic, little pepper and some salt. When that's cooked down a bit, we're gonna add the celery, the thyme, adding the leeks. <laughs> because each squash is a different size, don't just dump in the amount of recipes I told you, just really feel it out. I'm not gonna use all the nuts, just some of them. And I'm putting them in now because I wanna use the liquid of the stock to soften them up a little bit so they're not too hard when you crunch into them. Create an arrowroot slurry by pouring two tablespoons of arrowroot into a few tablespoons of water and mixing that around. This is going to hold the stuffing together so when you cut the squash open, it doesn't just all pour out onto the plate. And arrowroot is the least processed of all the starches. It's just a root from Japan. It has no taste so it doesn't affect the recipe at all. <laughs> all right, let's do a taste test, see how we're going. Mmm, I need a little bit more. Salt and pepper. It's a nice way to layer the salt and pepper in each step. It stops you from getting too much salt because over salting, you can't come back for that. So it's nice to just build it in layer by salty layer. Turn the heat off. I'm going to pour in the cooked caviar lentils, the cranberries to add that pop of color and sweetness. Okay, now carefully pour that into the stuffing. Oh my gosh, it's heavy. The key to a good stuffing is the moist consistency. Oh, I hate that word, moist. <laughs> you don't want it too wet or it's gonna be soggy and it's never gonna dry out, but you wanna make sure it's wet enough where you're not crunching into a hard piece of bread. And the way to do this is to slowly add the stock bit by bit, mixing that around and feeling it out. You want every piece to be a little bit wet, a little bit moist, but definitely not too wet. You want the top to be nice and dry and crust up in the oven. 
So just a little bit at a time and then giving it a chance to soak up the stock. Save the stock for later. You can also freeze it as well if you want. Pour the stuffing into a lightly oiled baking pan, smoothing it out. Oof, this one's gonna be very, very good. Cover it with tin foil and pop it in a preheated oven at 350 for 45 minutes. See you soon. Oh my gosh, it tastes so good. I'm so excited. All right, let's stuff this squash. Um, yum, I'm making them. Oh! Oh! <laughs> so pretty. All right, pop it back in the oven for 20 minutes to get the top all crispy and delicious. I'll see you soon. It's so beautiful. Thank you so much. I'm gonna give a little sage and parsley to brighten it up. Wow, it turned out really well. Look how it holds together in one piece. That's because of the arrow root. Look at that. Man, I feel so blessed making these shows for you guys. Please subscribe so I can continue to do it. It would really make my Christmas. Look at that bite. We have the sweetness of the squash, that juicy, juicy, yummy stuffing. I have some, that crunch of the nuts. They've been sort of soaked in the stock, so they're not too crunchy. I have that beautiful sweetness of the cranberry, that heartiness, and sort of a meaty texture of the mushrooms. Mm. It's like a flavor explosion in your mouth. And it's so delicious. I love you guys. You know, you guys have really kept me company through this last year and really helped me make my goals and dreams come true. And I'm just so grateful for all of you <laughs> who have subscribed. And um, I'm just really looking forward to this new year. So please subscribe so I can get a thousand subscribers to make this into my job to bring you beautiful plant-based meals. Um, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just really grateful from my heart. Thank you so much for watching Nutritious and Delicious. <laughs> What's wrong with me? I'm crying. I'm just, um, oh my god, why am I crying? I don't know why I'm crying. It's like my most successful recipe. It's so good. What is wrong with me? <laughs> oh my goodness, stop crying. Pull yourself together. I have so many blessings. I'm so grateful um, to everyone who subscribed, subscribed and everyone who watches my show. And um, I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas with your loved ones. And... I will see you next episode on Nutritious and Ambitious. <laughs>